Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We are so excited to give you an exclusive look at our latest conversational AI capabilities. My name is Nusheen Khrushri Shahi. I am the Director of Product Marketing here at Ovation CXM, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Alan Finley, who's the Head of Product. Uh, before we get started, just a quick note that we are recording today's session, and we will be sending out a link to the recording to everyone who registered. We also have our Q&A panel open, so if you look at your Zoom toolbar, wherever it is on your screen, you should see a label that says Q&A. Feel free to click on that and drop in any questions or comments you may have. We have allotted a chunk of time after the demo to answer any and all questions. With that, I'll take a few minutes to really contextualize our conversation before I pass it on to Alan for the demo. Most organizations, regardless of size or the industry that they're in, are focused on individual customer interactions as the pathway to improved customer experiences. Yet many studies and surveys show that customers can have excellent individual interactions, but mediocre or subpar overall experiences. And what we mean here is that customers may um, provide incredibly positive feedback after interacting with an employee or a team member or a support agent, because those folks were incredibly helpful and polite, not necessarily because their issue was resolved in that instance. And we know that this tracks in our own conversations with clients, as well as from industry research, that the top customer complaints really center around inefficiency in getting the answers and the support that they need quickly. So one of the top customer complaints is the 1-800 pinball experience. If you could go to the next slide, Alan. And what that means is, you know, customers get incredibly frustrated, as we all do, if we're routed to different departments or teams or, or even outside organizations with each team claiming that somebody else is responsible for the solution. Unsur unsurprisingly, really, customers are then fo forced to repeat information to each person or each department or each team, resulting in an incredible amount of frustration. And that, of course, does not lead to a good experience. And this inefficiency doesn't just affect customers. Employees struggle too. Support teams, in, in fact, a recent article found that a support team uh, spent 11.6 hours a week searching for the information that they needed to support customers in the moment. Our platform, CXM Engine, is built to organize, to unify, and to connect the experiences of your customers, employees, and any third-party partners from start to finish. With our platform, businesses are quickly accessing customer information, their history, any previous cases and their conclusions, a roundup of products and services, all the information that they need about their current journeys, journeys all their interactions and communications in one place. And our platform has actually been AI-enabled for a long time. We introduced AI capabilities into our knowledge delivery over five years ago, enabling agents to get the information they need at the exact moment that they need it when talking to customers. Since then, and over the past year, our product team has been working very diligently to infuse the latest and most relevant AI capabilities across our platform. In fact, earlier this year, in February uh, of 2023, we announced that we were integrating GPT-3, which is the foundation of ChatGPT, into our platform to help generate human-like responses and smart solutions in real time. And as of two weeks ago, we have fully infused generative AI into our platform to give businesses the capabilities that they need to personalize customer experiences and improve operational efficiency through their unique data and insights. With these capabilities, our customers can create more seamless, more connected, more secure, and overall superior experiences for their customers and employees. And all of that translates to incredible business results. Today, we will be showing you our conversational AI and summarization capabilities in a quick and exclusive demo. So I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Alan, to walk you through it. We're here to talk about generative AI and how Ovation CXM is integrating generative AI into all of our tools. Uh, we've, as a company, we've been leveraging AI for five, almost six years now. Um, but the changes that have come in the last six to nine months when it comes to generative AI and large language models have been uh, significant. And historically, the, the AI, the machine learning, the natural language processing, the models we've been using have been powerful. Um, but generative AI is, is really game changing. And the, the, the difference is kind of machine learning, natural language processing, kind of AI of, of before generative AI was very much about pattern matching and finding predictions. 
um, where generative AI is actually generating net new content every time you use it. So the possibilities are endless. And I'm going to go through a handful of examples today of where this generative AI gets really powerful. And so we've been spending a lot of time thinking about how do we start to incorporate generative AI into our system. Um, and when we think about generative AI, or I'll call it Gen AI, uh, we generally think about it in two buckets. One is co-pilot or internal use cases. How do you make your teams, your the people on your teams more efficient and more effective? Um, allow them to deliver faster answers, give them better insights, uh, make it so they do less manual work. Uh, but really, how can you give them all the knowledge that you have at their fingertips immediately? Uh, the other bucket is customer facing. So how could you deliver 24 seven immediate high quality answers to your customers generated from the content you already have? Um, so we generally think of those things in two buckets and I'll note as I go through today, which one these fall into. And so the value of, of Copilot, I mean, we've seen from some early, early sessions, we've seen efficiency gains of over 30% for, for teams that leverage these Copilot functionalities. This is from time saved, uh, taking notes, writing summaries, researching through historical interactions, uh, searching for answers in, in knowledge base articles, writing responses to questions. I mean, all those can be automated and delivered to you. Um, it's also been really helpful for onboarding new team members. If you're giving them the answers and the next steps and ways to improve in real time, they're going to get onboarded faster. Um, on the customer facing side, with our current virtual assistants that have AI, machine learning, and natural language process built in, across the board, we see about 20, 25% automation of, of live chats. We've seen up to a lot higher than that in some specific use cases, but generative AI early indication is showing that it won't be uncommon to achieve 60% automation of questions that are coming in over your website or in your applications. We've even seen studies that show 60 to 80% of all inbounds can be automated. Now, it's going to be very industry specific. I know we often work in a more complex industry with multiple partners and vendors and hardware and internet connectivity. So uh, we, should, we should set expectations of based on the complexity of the industry, the automation will follow that. Um, but combine both the internal and customer facing AI use cases, you, there's a lot of room for increased efficiency, faster customer replies, better quality answers, and overall the ability to deliver better answers faster. And so going through the agenda today, we're going to talk about conversational AI. We're going to talk about knowledge search and delivering answers directly from a search query. And we're going to talk about summarizations. Uh, so let's dive in, and I'm going to share my screen and walk through a couple of live demos of what this looks like Innovation CXM. So first, let's start with conversational AI. Um, this is our Messenger application. It's a web-based application. It can live on a public website. It can live inside uh, a SaaS application. It can live in a mobile app. Um, it's the digital interface between you and your customers. So what I'm going to show today is a very basic example. Um, this wouldn't be shown to a customer, but for the sake of showing you what's going on behind the scenes, uh, let's take a look at, at how we would configure a new generative AI virtual assistant. So here I'm entering my company name and my company website. I'm gonna train it on ovationcxm.com. As I mentioned, a customer wouldn't do this, but I'm just bringing to the surface some of the things that would happen as we train up a new uh, virtual assistant for you. So I'm gonna click next. So this is spinning up a new bot trained on ovationcxm.com, our public marketing website. And so next, I'm going to give a little bit of more information. So I'll tell it uh, my name so it knows who I am as the customer when I chat in. My name is Alan. And what we see here is you can select your role. Again, customer wouldn't select this, but behind the scenes, you can decide based on where the conversation is happening and the customer it's chatting to, what is the persona of that end user? Is it inside my application? So it'll always be talking to an existing customer. Maybe the answers are a bit more technical and detailed about the product. Uh, am I talking to a prospect? Is it on my website? Is it a bit more salesy? And the goal is to always get a meeting set up or a demo. Um, or is it someone internal talking to this conversational AI agent? Um, and then maybe they have access to additional private information that it doesn't have on the public website. So you can define these user personas, the brand voice for each type of customer and segment it so you can have very bespoke and personalized experiences for each type of customer. So for this case, I'm just going to go ahead and select prospective customer. Say I'm putting this on my public website. 
I drop the snippet, I train it, and I'm going to go ahead and ask it some questions. So it gives a welcome message. Uh, welcome to Ovation CXM. We're excited to have you. How can I help you? I'm going to ask it, what services do you provide? So pretty basic question about website. And so it's still spinning up right now because this is a real-time demo. So it's going to take a little bit to generate this first response. So while it's doing that, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. So it's currently going through and it has all the pages of our website. It's looking through all the different content related to the services that we provide. And what it's going to do is it's going to summarize those services and bring them into a user-friendly, readable format that's really easy to digest. So this doesn't have to, the, the customer, the user doesn't have to go to multiple pages to find all the different services and offers and go through menu navigations. They can just ask a simple question and get a summary. And so a lot of the power that comes from these generative AI models comes from the simplicity of deploying and maintaining them. Uh, with, mach with machine learning and NLP-based chatbots, you spend a lot of time creating and optimizing the various flows, the question and answers. And they can be extremely powerful and precise, but that takes time. With the generative AI models, you just need to make sure you feed it all the right content and it can take it from there. And over time, we believe the, the balance is actually going to be a bit of both. Uh, there'll be some topics you want to really control the answers uh, that are very granular and you'll, you'll design those and build them specifically. And for the long tail of questions, you'll let generative AI answer it for the customer. So in this case, um, here it talks about how Ovation CXM provides a comprehensive customer experience, includes AI journeys, conversations, ecosystem, um, and it goes through all the services that Ovation CXM provides. And so maybe I'm reading through and I don't know what AI powered journeys is. So I'll ask a follow-up question. What are AI powered journeys? And so as you go in and as the customer or whoever the end user is, is having this conversation, it can, the, the bot remembers every previous question and answer in the context, in its memory. So you can continue to drill into topics without having to repeat the question or start from the top of the flow, where since it knows what you already asked and what it's already told you, it can take just a piece of that. You can drill in and now it'll go back to the site and double down on just this specific topic. So having this context makes the whole conversation feel a bit more natural and feel a bit more fluid of what it can do. So here it goes deeper into AI power journeys. So it's offered, uh, these are the customer, it offered by Ovation CXM. These journeys use generative AI to provide insights, summarizations, suggestions based on your unique business data, allowing for faster customer experiences, actions. I won't read the whole thing, but also what you'll notice at the bottom, each of these responses, it notes that it's generated by AI. So that's clear to the user. And it also sources where it found the answer. So if I click on one of these sources, it'll actually take me to the page where it pulled the answer from. So it can scope all this. And what it does this to make sure that the answer is always factual because we train these so it doesn't answer questions outside of the context of what you want it to talk about. So they're always sourced. The user can go in, they can drill in, they can find more. You can even see sometimes it's sourced to multiple pages. So it can take content across multiple data sets and combine them into a single answer. Um, let's ask, let's go off topic a little bit. Who won the NFL games last night? So what happens if the conversation, if the, if the end user asks something that <clears throat> the bot doesn't know and it shouldn't talk about? Well, we build in guardrails to the conversational AI so that it will only answer questions that it knows that it can talk about. So in this case, we only trained it on our public website and we said, hey, don't, if they ask you anything else, don't answer it. We don't want to get conversations going about sports or football or, or politics or anything like that. So as you can see here, it says, I'm just designed to help with Ovation CXM. I'm not, I can't talk about NFL games or any unrelated topics. This ensures that people aren't using your virtual assistant for something they shouldn't. <clears throat> so thank you for that. Um, well, I really want to talk to a human. Maybe I really, I really want to get those football scores. Um, so you can also control how you get to a human. <clears throat> In this case, we said, no one's available. Don't escalate to a human. So these are fully automated chats. It's available on a website. It's self-service. But if um, you can't get the, if the customer can't get the answer they want, you could say, here's the phone number to call or email us or uh, go to our site and submit a form or go in, go in the product and submit a request, whatever it is, whatever your channels are, you can direct them to that. Or you can, you can have a real time conversational handoff. So in real time, it escalates to a human. 
they get the full visibility of the entire conversation that's happened as they chat through and they can pick up that conversation and continue it on. So really flexible with what you want to do with the conversation, how it ends and how it gets escalated if needed. Also, since a lot of these conversations are fully automated and essentially invisible to you, you want to make sure you know what's going on with those customers. So even if a human's not involved, every conversation still creates a case, logs the conversation, tags it, resolves it, attributes it to the source, and all the analytics flow up to your analytics dashboard. So you can keep an eye on what the topics were that were triggered, how many were automatically resolved versus escalated to a human. Uh, what has the usage been over time on various topics? Um, and you can really drill deep into all the analytics is what's the sentiment or what's the satisfaction? Is it going well? What, what are they asking that we don't have answers to? And you can still have the visibility of everything happening behind the scenes, even if you're not involved in every single chat. So you can free up a lot of time, but still have all the control over what's happening with those conversations. So if we look at the data for conversational AI, um, we've looking at some of the historical data in the system, each message saves approximately, each generated response from the AI saves approximately 50 cents worth of human time. And so on average, what we've seen is a conversation lasts about eight messages back and forth between a customer and a human. So on average, every conversation that's fully automated saves about $4. So you can do the math based on your support volume to get a sense of what the savings might be leveraging conversational AI uh, within your support offerings. So I'm gonna pause there on conversational AI and I'm gonna move on to the next use case to give a demo of knowledge search. So this one falls both in the customer facing bucket uh, because here we have just a very basic, essentially blank version of our external knowledge base, a public knowledge base you could create uh, that customers can go to find articles and self-serve. Uh, but this one also falls into the internal co-pilot bucket because this knowledge search and this answer generator um, is also available through the solutions panel. So if you're supporting a customer on a case, you can also ask questions of the AI directly on the case and get quick answers right where you already are. So let's go ahead and use this as an example. Um, I'm going to add how to add a journey to a case. So in this, in this example, I'm an existing customer. I'm trying to do something in the product. I need to figure out how to do it. Today, I could go to the knowledge base, I can search for it, I'll get a list of articles back, and I could read through the article, find my answer, and go solve my own problem. Um, but you've probably seen something like this if you've used Google recently, I don't know, maybe half or a little more than half. Every time you ask a question, you'll get a little answer at the top of Google. It's called the Google snippet. So in addition to getting a list of articles that match the, the question you're asking, it can also just answer the question directly. And so here we have how to add a journey to a case. And so to add a journey to a case, follow these six steps. Short, concise, straight to the point, tries to answer the customer's question directly. And what it also does, as we saw with the conversational AI, it sources where it pulled this from. So we actually have an article called adding a journey to a case, and you can open that. It'll open up the article um, and you can read through. Here's the article where it falls in the public knowledge library because we train this AI, AI on help.goboomtown.com, our public knowledge base. So here it has a bunch of images and steps and processes to add a journey to a case. So it takes all that data and it simplifies it down into a couple quick steps to really get to the point of what's trying the customer's trying to do quickly. Uh, and it also adds a number of related articles. Hey, I, I found these might be similar. You might want to check these out as well, but they're not directly related to the answer that I gave you. Uh, so let's take another example. How can I reset my password? <clears throat> so just a different example. Again, this is this AI is trained on help.goboomtown.com, our public knowledge base. Within the Ovation CXM platform, uh, this is going to be a standard offering. As you add content to the knowledge module, it's going to automatically train these AI tools. So the customers will get the benefit of having these fast responses. The internal teams will be able to access this as well. So if you're live chatting or emailing or even on a phone call with a customer, you can get this access to these questions without having to drill into articles, summarize it manually yourself. It can summarize it for you and you can deliver that back to the customer directly. Um, so while this loads, this will generate the next question. I think what we'll see here is that um, 
resetting your password in CXME, Customer Experience uh, Management Engine. So here again, it gives a step-by-step -step process to reset your password, a seven-step process. Here's how to do it. The difference here is what you'll notice is that it's actually pulling from two different articles. So not only can it just take an article and summarize it, it can actually look through your whole content base and say, hey, I actually, the best answer uh, comes from a little bit of both of these places of content. So the structure of the content, the organization actually becomes a li little less critical. It's just the fact that you have the content in there to begin with is the most important piece. So here it looks through logging in for the first time and changing your password. So setting your password is different whether you're new or whether you're existing, and it gives you details on both of those. So based on who you are, you could click in to learn more based on that content. And again, it has some related articles as well down at the bottom. So that wraps up the knowledge search answers. And as I mentioned, this is going to be available on your public knowledge base, automatically trained on your knowledge content, as well as inside, inside CXME on a case. So you can quickly get these answers wherever you are, whether you're a customer or an internal user. So next, I'm going to switch gears and talk a bit about summarization. So one area that we found that teams spend a lot of time on is taking notes on cases, summarizing interactions, uh, what the issue was, what the steps were to take taken to resolve it, what the outcome was. And this could be paragraph summaries, this could be tags, categories, however teams do it. But rather than spending all that time writing out summaries at the end of the case, teams can now maybe just take a couple quick notes or even just rely on the email thread or the chat conversation or the phone transcript and let the system generate the summary for you. So well, there is a case with a, a number of back and forths between Mary and Tim. Mary's the customer, Tim is the uh, support agent here helping Mary with her problem. This case, let's say it was just assigned to me. I see there's some notes, some troubleshooting steps, some descriptions. I've got to take this over. I don't want to read through all the different conversations. I'm just going to go ahead and click actions and generate a summary. And so what this does is generates a written summary of everything that's happened on this specific interaction. And so what this summary looks for and what it tries to produce is first, what happened during the case? What was the main issue or question? What were the resolution steps to solve it? Uh, how did the, the support team su approach the problem? And how did the customer receive it? Were they satisfied or were they frustrated? Uh, it, it attempts to diagnose what the final status was. If it's closed, um, great. What were the resolutions? What was the final resolution? But if it's not closed, what are the next steps? Uh, was it escalated? Does it need additional attention? Or is it waiting for something? And then finally, it attempts to suggest improvements that could be made to this specific case. What could the team have done better? to deliver a better experience. So let's take a look at this summary that was generated. The customer, you can see Mary Beans is the customer here. Tim was the support person. Uh, she's experiencing an issue with adding new members to the daycare software. Every time she enters all the required information and hits save, she gets an invalid field error, it has to re-enter everything. Um, a support ticket has been created for the technical support team. The agent suggests trying a different approach of adding um, each field one at a time. The customer expresses frustration and anger at the software's constant trouble. The agent apologized <clears throat> and asked for more detail about the information being entered. I won't read the whole thing. I'll skip ahead a little bit. They checked for updates. There were no updates, and it was immediately escalated to tier two um, for, for uh, next steps. Uh, the next steps is for the customer is to wait for assistance from tier two or the tier two support team. And then to improve the process, better validation and error handling should be implemented to prevent the invalid field error. So in the suggestions, it's not only ways, or in the in suggestions for improvements, it's not only ways that the person supporting the customer could have done something better or different, but it can also suggest ways to improve your product because that's all part of the customer experience. So these improvements um, are part of each, of each summary that we deliver. Uh, these are great not only for the teams, but also for supervisors, for team leads, and even other teams like product to come in and see what the common challenges are and how we can improve customer experience holistically. And so this summary uh, covers a lot and I'm, I can go ahead and I can save it down to this case. So anyone that comes and visits this case later has full access to the, to the summary of exactly what happened. These can be manually uh, created on the fly, like we showed. They can also be um, automatically, I'll say every time a case gets resolved, you want to summarize it and save it for later in case you ever want to come back and revisit it um, and get a quick snapshot of exactly what happened. And so 
looking at the data of summaries, if somebody spends 90 seconds on average after each phone call or email interaction, writing up notes and summaries of what happened, um, with an average number of cases per day that we've seen, each person could save about 27 minutes each day for about an 8.3% efficiency gain um, across their day. And that's just cleaning up, not having to take notes and high quality summaries on every interaction. That is all time that could be spent with more time with the customers um, on higher touch issues, more complicated troubleshooting and other places where there's higher value to have a human involved in these conversations. In addition to that, you still get high quality summaries that are consistent. They follow a similar format on every interaction. So whenever you hand off a case to the next team or go back and review them later, you always know exactly what to look at and what to expect from those summaries. So that's summarizing each individual interaction. Um, but one more thing I want to show today is what if you want to summarize at a higher level? Uh, here we have a customer holiday nails and spa. What if I want to get insight into everything going on with this customer? So another area we found where, where teams spend a lot of time is when they need to understand what's been happening with the customer. This could be to provide a better support experience because you have more context. Um, it could be, provide more context to work through an escalation, to identify an upsell opportunity, or maybe to prepare for a customer meeting you're about to walk into. I think understanding the complete context of a customer can be time consuming since you'll need to go and read through each of the previous interactions, all the email threads and phone call transcripts, all the notes to, to get that holistic picture of exactly what happened. And even things like, have there been repeat issues? Um, are there things that frustrate the customer? Are there things that they're happy with? That's all. It takes time to pull out of a customer profile. So what we've done is we've created a customer summary. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this. Uh, it takes 20 to 30 seconds. And while that's generating, I'll, I'll give a brief overview of what it's doing. So our customer summary is first they start, they look at the customer, all the details, the products they use, their history. And then they go through each interaction and they read it reads through the notes, the details, the tags, every conversation across all channels. So the, the transcripts, the emails, the chats. Um, and it generates a single and a page of, of language that summarizes all that into one easy to digest summary. And so what this customer summary attempts to do is cover how has the overall customer experience been? How is the customer feeling? What's their sentiment? Are they happy? Are they frustrated? Are they mad? Uh, are there any open issues, escalations that need to be addressed? What about what are the most common issues for that customer? Uh, are they having a lot of issues? Are they engaged? And is that engagement good? I, they, they love what they're doing. They're getting a lot of value. Or is it bad? They're frustrated with bugs or issues. Um, how often do you connect with this customer and on what channel? What's their preferred channel of preference? Um, and then finally, similar to case summarizations, we offer a suggestion on what could be done to improve the overall customer experience for this specific customer. So let's take a look at what this customer gave us. So Holiday Nail and Spa, um, often represented by Sarah Torres and Laura Byers, has a mixed experience with the support provided. The customer's overall sentiment uh, with the support provide uh, the overall sentiment seems to be a frustration due to a recurring issue with their booking software, specifically in processing credit card transactions. So there's some insight into the recurring issues. The customer has been in contact with the support team on three separate occasions. The first case was handled smoothly with the customer needing assistance installing the booking software on the new on the new PC, the support team was able to guide them through the process effectively. However, the following two cases resolved around the same issue, the inability for the booking software to, uh, to process credit card transactions. The first time this issue occurred, it was resolved by updating the software. Unfortunately, the problem recurred shortly after, causing significant frustration for the customer, despite the support team's best efforts. The issue cannot be resolved during the second interaction and has been escalated for further investigation. So, hey, there's an outstanding issue. We should pay attention to this. Um, the customer primarily contacts with the support team via the remote support tools. Uh, the recurring issues they face are related to the booking software, specifically its inability to process credit card transactions. Um, to improve the customer's experience, it's crucial to address the recurring issue of the booking software promptly and effectively. Ensuring that the software is consistently up to date and functioning correctly will likely prevent future issues. In addition, providing the customer with a direct line of communication for any future problems could help alleviate their frustration and improve the overall experience. So again, summary of what happened, what's been outstanding, what's the history of this customer, what's the current escalated issue, what are their most common problems, and how what could we do for this customer? How can we make their experience better? And so keep in mind, this is 
really focus on my organization's experience with this customer today. But if you also leverage the ecosystem module and connect with partners in your ecosystem, this can give you insights into how this shared customer is experiencing interactions with partners in your ecosystem as well. So a true 360 degree view of everything going on with this customer. Uh, these summaries, as I showed, can be generated on the fly. You can edit them and add additional details if you want to. Uh, you can also regenerate if you want to get a slightly different take on, on the summary. It'll regenerate with new content. Um, and in the future, this, I mean, today, this is very qualitative. You can, re you can read through it and get a sense. But in the future, uh, we're going to be pulling out quantitative insights from this as well. Uh, this customer relative to all the other customers, how does their health score fit in? Um, what kind of tagged and quantitative, what are their most common issues? How often do they contact us? How does that relate to other customers? There's a lot more data we're going to be pulling out of these interactions and displaying on this interface as well. And so just coming back to the data, on average, what we saw, if it takes about six and a half minutes to read through all the latest interactions, uh, read the email threads, the summaries, the notes, to get that holistic picture of a customer, um, now with a single click, you can get this detailed summary pretty much immediately. Um, so on average, that saves about $2.50 worth of time every time you're generating these summaries for whatever the use case is that you're trying to achieve. So to recap, uh, we walked through four generative AI use cases. We started with conversational AI uh, direct to the customer. We then showed knowledge search and direct answers on a search bar. Uh, and then finally, we wrapped up with summarizations, both summarizing each individual interaction and then summarizing an ex entire experience for a customer. And so as I mentioned in the beginning, we believe that generative AI will fundamentally change the way we deliver experiences to customers. Um, it's going to start off slow by incorporating these small yet powerful use cases into your workflows. And over time, it'll become more and more central and critical to your everyday work. Uh, and we we have a robust AI roadmap that we'll, we'll continue to add more use cases across all of our modules, Innovation CXM, throughout our software uh, that will both make your teams more powerful and effective and make and deliver answers to your customers directly more quickly. Uh, so we will be sure to share additional updates as we do as we launch additional generative AI features. We'll host more webinars, um, post them on our release notes. We're excited to share with you where that's going.